wellness revolution starts now. Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Hotze. Welcome to Dr. Hotze's Wellness Revolution. You know, I believe every one of you needs to have a physician and a staff of professionals who can coach you on a path to health and wellness naturally. So as you mature, you got energy, you got vitality, and you have enthusiasm for life like our guest, Melanie Blackmer from Lake Charles, Louisiana. And uh, she is a fireball. She came in here in in, uh, July of this year, 2021, and had a host of problems. And I'm going to let her talk about what what led what kind of symptoms she was having, what what experiences she had with her with her conventional doctors, how in the world she found out about us, and how she's been doing. So, Melanie, welcome to Dr. Hotsey's Wellness Revolution, and you're part of the Wellness Revolution now. Yes, I'm excited to be. <laughs> Thanks hey, it's, for having. Hey, you got two choices. You can either be. Everybody has got a choice to be either healthy and well or sick and tired. It's mm-hmm. all a choice that only you can make, and you made it. And I congratulate you. You literally drove yourself all the way from Lake Charles, Louisiana, to come over here. So tell us about yourself. Did you grow up there in Lake Charles, Melanie? I did. I grew up here. Um, my father was Air Force, so I was actually born in Anchorage, but they were from here. So we moved back, and I've lived here all my life. So, uh, and, and you're married now, and you have any kiddos? I have two boys. One is married, and I have a grandbaby on the way, my good. first. Hey, good for you. And, uh, and my other one is um, pursuing his um, life in San Angelo, Texas, and he loves it there. So yeah. both are doing really well. Well, it's that, exciting to watch. That's wonderful. So tell me about any medical problems or symptoms that you had as you were growing up in, you know, as a young woman and, uh, you know, after you got married and after you had your babies, what, what, what sort, were you in good health all your life? Then all of a sudden started feeling bad as you approached, uh, you know, you, you haven't gone through the change yet, but, uh, you know, that's, that's around the corner. Yeah. So, uh, and I know as women march through their lives that, you know, problems developed that you hadn't had before. So what exactly affected you adversely? What, what, what symptoms did you have that made you go seek medical attention at the conventional well, doctors, at your OB-GYN doctor? Yes. I, I've always said I felt sick all my life. I don't, I don't think I know what it feels like to be normal or to be well. I've always been fatigued as a child. Um, as an adult and the fatigue just only got worse. And, and as a child, I can remember thinking uh, my goal of the day was just to get through the day so I could get back home. I couldn't focus. I was always foggy headed, just totally leaning on God to get through school. I just couldn't do it. I've, I've um, always had that extreme fatigue. Um, I started with um, reactions to food young um, foods would kind of knock me out for hours. And my mom had been diagnosed with hypoglycemia. So she just kind of helped me look at my foods and she would help me figure out what was knocking me out so that, so that I wouldn't have that reaction. So she kind of started steering me towards looking at what was going into my body and how I could control that reaction. When I started my cycle, it was horrible from the first day. It was always very heavy, very hard, very painful, um, emotions all over the place, uh, from, from day one. And, um, all of these things just got worse and worse as, as I got older. And, um, I, I was taken to a, a OB doctor or GYN when I was younger, they tried birth control and it just threw me, made my body crazy, made me crazy. <laughs> I always seemed to react opposite to hormones to what I was supposed to react. So I, I didn't do that. Continued to get worse. They always told me if I had children, it would go away. Um, and I did have children and it did not go away. And I did find that everything continued to get worse. I did have two C-sections with both. I was sicker after each one. 
um, the food issues got worse. I think I started at 17 taking foods out of my diet that if it bothered me, it would make me either emotional, sleepy, or I would have gastro issues. So anything that caused any of those um, responses, I would just take them out of my diet. So since I was 17, I've been removing food from my diet. Um, I, I got to a point where I couldn't even move. I was so fatigued um, having to take naps at red lights because I couldn't stay awake to, to drive around. Um, you know, I just pushed through life. I've, I've always said it felt like I had to drag my body through my life, my, my mind and my, I had the desire to enjoy my family. I had boys that were active and wanted to do things and, you know, I would just give it all I had and then I would collapse afterwards. And, um, well, you had to seek some medical care about this. You talked to your physicians and when you visited with your <laughs> conventional doctor, your family doctor, or your ob Jen, what did they tell you? Um, you know, I, I was told I had endometriosis. Uh, I was told, uh, you know, by my OBGYN, um, my regular doctors until I was in my mid forties, everything looked perfect. I looked perfect. Blood sugar looked perfect. Thyroid looked perfect. Everything looked perfect. So, but you didn't I, feel perfect. You didn't feel no, well at all. And what did I they, felt, what did they say that was due to? Um, depression. So I was put on depression medicine and that again, made my body go haywire. I ballooned and I was a zombie. I wasn't happy. There was nothing for me to be sad about. I had a beautiful family, a wonderful husband, everything in life besides my health was what I would have wanted it to be. And I just wanted to enjoy it. And so I got to a point where I had to do it myself. I had to figure it out myself. And so um, I did see uh, an integrative doctor that helped me with um, heavy metal poisoning uh, and some insulin resistance, but I lost all that I, what I had gained from that, I lost it when I had an endometriosis surgery and I've never been able to get it back. So that was probably in my mid forties. Um, so I've been struggling since then just to live <laughs> and enjoy um, what God has given me a beautiful life. Um, I just couldn't enjoy it to the fullest because of, of my health and, and the decline of my health. Okay. So there you were stuck in Lake Charles is not a bad place to be stuck. I don't mean that in a bad way, but you were <laughs> stuck there in your health situation had been, had not been able to get any resolution of your, of your health issues with your doctors. you your main problem was fatigue, but obviously that adversely affected your mental sharpness and mental focus. Yes. And, um, of course they put you on, they put you on the antidepressants. You had difficulty with weight and yes. did you have any joint muscle aches or pains? Um, yes, a, a little bit. I do but all over. Yeah. Body hurt. <laughs> and, Just, and what, and what about your, your menstrual cycles? Um, they remain horrible. I was always on time, you know, I, I had a good cycle. I was always on time. Um, it was just always so heavy and hard. And I got to a point, um, I was put on thyroid medicine in my mid forties and, and that just kind of gave me a little boost, but it didn't get me anywhere great. And so I was becoming anemic because of my cycles. Sure. And I, I was just getting to a point where, I had, I had spent so much trying to figure things out on, on my own with supplements and stuff. I kind of surrendered to traditional medicine. And, and, and in that, um, we removed my gallbladder and my, uh, I had a partial hysterectomy because of fibroid tumors. And now this is, this is, this is an important point, ladies. Yeah. If you like Melanie are experiencing heavy menstrual cycles, m menstrual periods, uh, that have ch that sometimes like Melanie, hers have been bad all her life. But oftentimes this happens as women march through their menstrual life. They get into the thirties and forties. Oftentimes after they have children, their menstrual cycles become heavier. Then they oftentimes get breakthrough bleeding. And they'll develop mm -hmm. fibroids. And of course, you go to your OB Jen, and his solution is, "Hark, we can stop all that bleeding real easy. We'll just give you a hysterectomy." 
but mm-hmm. the, but uh, and you can take out the uterus. Of course, you're going to stop bleeding. But that bleeding was caused by a problem, and the problem was hormonal imbalance. And this yeah. is a Melanie's presentation is classical with heavy menstrual bleeding and fibroid tumors. This is a sign of estrogen dominance. She simply needed earlier in life to have a little bit of progesterone, day 15 through 28, could have balanced out the estrogen. Remember, estrogen's the proliferative hormone. It proliferates the inner lining of the womb. And the progesterone, when you have a normal production of progesterone, what the progesterone does is it matures the inner lining of the womb and it prepares everything for a preg- prepares the uterus for a pregnancy. There's no pregnancy. You stop making your hormones, you have your period, and you go on. But if, but if you don't make enough progesterone, you're estrogen dominant, progesterone deficient, and your periods, you build up a lot of tissue in your womb, and it also promotes the growth of fibroids, and there you have it. There's where you are. And many, many women find themselves in this situation. If your physician, and these OB-GYN doctors should know this for crying out loud in a bucket, but you know what? Most people don't realize OB-GYN doctors are surgeons. They deliver babies. And this is how they make their living. They deliver babies the first half of their career. They give do hysterectomies the second half of the career. That's just the way OB-GYNs are. As a matter of fact, I worked and trained under an OB-GYN when I was uh, in my uh, – after medical school during my internship. And I remembered he, he told me he would, he would go from room to room trying to find people that needed a hysterectomy. He called itself mining for hysterectomies in his office. That's terrible. When all these things, you don't have to, we could have, if, if I'd have got you back 20 years ago, we could have prevented that. But anyway, that happened. And still that didn't solve your problem. You stopped bleeding, but you still had hormonal imbalances. And then, of course, you went through, you know, you, you had what we call a surgical menopause, but you still, your ovaries were left in place, but they die off very quickly after and quit functioning about within two years after the hysterectomy, and so you had all those changes of loss of hormones and felt terrible. Yeah, and what I did. And what did your ob Jen? did you tell him, I still feel terrible. I may not be bleeding anymore, but I feel terrible, doctor. What are you going to do? And he, I, You know, I, I really didn't. I, I, have, I think I've seen him once since then. Um, How long ago did you have the hysterectomy? I believe it was uh, 2018. Okay. So in the yeah. last, so about three, a little over three years ago, somewhere around three years ago. Okay. Yeah. So how in the world did you decide, what made you decide to come to the Hoetze Health and Wellness Center? Well, I really, I, you know, I think I told you I had, I had basically given up hope and um, I was just going to enjoy what I had and, and pray for the best. And um, I, I had gotten sick with COVID and, and I saw how it affected my husband. And I thought, you know what, I really got, I really got to keep pursuing. And so I literally was driving over the bridge in Lake Charles and stopped for a second and asked God to take over and help me um, find help. I didn't know where to go and I didn't know what to do. And literally two nights later, I had dinner with a friend who knew a, a, she had a friend that is seeing one of the doctors at, at Hoetze Health and Wellness Center. And um, really, she was telling me about long haulers. And I thought, oh, well, I have that. I need, to, <laughs> I need to get treatment for that. And and so when I called, I talked to Sherry. And I, it's just, you know, it was such a sweet blessing because I, she just picked up on how sick I was. And, and she just kept encouraging me that, no, this, we see people like you, you're, you're the one that needs to come. We understand what you're going through because I've always been the mystery. I've always been the puzzle. I've always been the weird patient that complains, complains, and there's no answer. There's no reason. And, um, it, it was just hard to take that step. And, uh, my husband, when he heard, he was just, no, you need to do this. You've got to go. And um, I really just feel like I, it just happened. I ended up there. I really feel like it was an answer to my prayer that all of this just fell into place that our friend was going um, right when I needed to find out about this clinic. And then what was neat is I had already seen you in a video. So it kind of all pulled it together that um, that this was my answer and uh, just had so much peace on my way 
from Lake Charles to Houston to see y'all. Well, we've heard this story more than once. That's a great story. And we're so glad that you gave us the opportunity and privilege of serving you. So you came over here and you drove up to the building. What did you expect when you drove up and walked in? What did you, you, I'm sure, you know, coming all the way from Lake Charles, you, that has to be a lot of anticipation. You're thinking, what are the people going to be like? What's the building going to be like? What are they going to do? How are they going to treat me? Are they going to think, <laughs> or are they going to think I'm just a, a, another crazy female who makes her, you know, has psychosomatic problems like all the other yeah. doctors do, or are they going right. to listen to me? So you came in and tell, tell us from the moment you drove up, tell us your experience. Well, you know, even the outside of the building is warm and welcoming. So it was just, it, I don't know, there's just a piece about it when you walk, when you drive up. And I had told, I, I had been told that I would be greeted at the door, but um, I said it was like being greeted by a host of angels. Everywhere you go, there's a bright smile, a warm, compassionate person, somebody that just knows how sick you are. They just know what you've been through and they know you're at the end of your rope and, and you just feel that from them, that they were there to care for you. And, and that was just, that was the sweetest thing. But yes, I, you know, there's always that thing because I've always been treated that way. There's always the blank stare. There's always kind of the silent eye roll when I say what, what I'm experiencing that that just doesn't make any sense or whatever. So um, I really you know, that's back there, but I, I knew that, that I was going to a place that was going to, I, that was going to hear me. The fear was, is there, but it just kind of fell away when I walked through the door. Well, that's wonderful. And now you met with, uh, of course you met with the nurses came in, brought you into mm-hmm. the room and you met our wonderful concierge, Becky Diaz yeah. out there. And she's yeah. lovely. And been my concierge for 17 years right out there in the reception area. So what what did you, before we talk about your visit with Dr. Ellsworth, what did you think about the accommodations and the uh, appointments in the office? I, I, it was just, it was wonderful. The accommodations, just the way that it makes you feel. It, it just, and that's almost a part of your treatment, just walking into that beautiful atmosphere with the beautiful people um, their beautiful spirits we shared so much every person i met with was like we were best friends the minute we met <laughs> and they all knew because they've all been treated and or most of them and and so they had a story to tell me how how they had gone through and 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 been helped and so we we shared our stories we shared our lives and um, I think I almost didn't leave that day because <laughs> it was so wonderful. <laughs> I enjoyed every minute. And and then just the care, the, you know, taking care of us in the room. Um, it is like kind of being in a hotel experience. You know, the, the sweet lady, I didn't get her name, that brings you your food and it's prepared so beautifully after you've done your blood work. And just so sweet and precious and, and very... Um, encouraging to be treated that way well t- you 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 may not realize exactly what we've uh you 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 feel what we produced here but you may not know that it was intentional we got out of medical practice back in 1996 and decided we were going to go into the hospitality industry and within that context we were going to provide medical care so we changed up all the appointments in the office and redid everything and new new hardwood floors and oriental carpets and lovely chairs and nobody wears white coats and nobody wears scrubs right. everybody's dressed to the t's just like walking into the ritz carlton as a matter of really? fact we have even gone to the ritz carlton and sent our people to the ritz carlton at buckheads out in atlanta to get trained and we brought in uh the ritz carlton staff to help train our people here on providing extraordinary hospitality and guest experiences because we know that's very important in getting somebody healthy and well, they've got to feel like they're really taken care of Mm -hmm. and that people care about them. And it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of intention, a lot of time and money to provide the kind of atmosphere we provide. But we know that if we provide that, that it's going to help so many people. They're going to feel so much better about Mm -hmm. being someplace that people really care. They're nice, they're lovely, and they're hospitable. 
They, mm-hmm. they treat you like you're of value. So we call it, we don't call anybody a patient. You're not our patient. You're our guest yes. in, in our, in our, in our center. And we count it a privilege to serve you. So you met with Dr. Ellsworth. Now I was did. he, was he like your regular conventional doctor, rolled his eyes, didn't listen, wrote you not off, gave you antidepressants, told you to go home, nothing wrong with you. Everything was fine. <laughs> Not at all. And it's the first time I've spoken with somebody where I I wasn't the puzzle. I wasn't the mystery. I made complete sense to him. And I did not feel like I was the craziest person he's ever seen (laughs) or the weirdest person or whatever. I'm always, I've been told that I'm the craziest patient anybody's ever seen. And I actually said that to him. I, I, I think the last thing I told him, I said, okay, well, here's the one <laughs> that's going to make your face go blank. And when I told him, he said, you know, that, that I'm the, my, my story is the story he treats over and over many times that, that I'm the patient that your clinic is developed for that. We're the type of patient that you see. So He was not surprised by anything. And I told him a whole long story with all the strange little pieces in it. And he told me my story back medically with where I started with my breakdown and how it happened. And it made sense to me. Every word he said made sense. I, I could agree with everything he said. And um, so it, it was just, I think I relaxed that, that I started relaxing when I walk in the door because everybody's so sincere and sweet and compassionate. But my hope started right there at that moment when he said that this is this is the kind of patient he sees, you know, and, and he fully understood every single part of it. Um, I just for the first time I've had I had hope again. So I know he made some recommendation and our program is really very straightforward we treat for airborne and food allergies and you had both we treat mm-hmm. for we treat for yeast because most people in their lives one way or another have had courses of antibiotics and that can get, create an imbalance in the gastrointestinal tract particularly the large intestine cause yeast to, uh, yeast overgrowth so we have a uh, we cleanse out the gut using a proper a good healthy eating program yeast free eating program we treat for thyroid when indicated using natural desiccated thyroid. We replenish the sex hormones. So in females, it would be balancing estrogen and progesterone and supporting the adrenal gland with some DHEA and others, cortisol if indicated, and then getting them on vitamins and minerals to help detox and to help your body be able to produce energy within your cells. Your problem was low energy. That's a very common uh complaint and symptom that individuals have as they move into uh, middle age and into uh, their le- as they mature in their life. They lose their energy. And that's just mm-hmm. loss of production of energy within the cells. Our cells produce electrical energy. We're a, we're, we're a field of electrical current. And our body's got to produce electricity within our mitochondria, the power plants in our cells. And if we don't produce enough electricity, we're low voltage and we're sluggish. We want everybody to be high voltage and full of energy and the life of the party and, uh, you know, the live wire. And you probably were that way at one time in your life. Maybe you've never been that way, but we're going to get you that way. You're going to be the life of the party. You're going to be the live wire. And it's by helping you produce energy, and we do that through the hormones and through the eating program and through getting the load of allergies out of your, off your system and getting rid of the yeast and, and replenishing the uh, – vitamins and minerals, and then get you on an exercise program. Okay, so now it's been, you came in, said you came in on July 23rd, so it's been, what, three, pushing four, what, what is that, right? that's August, September, October, pushing three months mm-hmm. right now. How have you done? On a scale of zero to ten, zero being just the way you felt when you came in, ten being the best you could ever imagine, imagine feeling. How would you rate your improvement? Are you at a two? Are you at a three? How far are you? Oh, goodness. I always have trouble answering that question, but I, I'm i feeling really good. So I guess maybe uh, I tend to forget half of it, but three or a four, I would say, um, because I, I felt like I was 
I, I literally felt like I was dying when I got to y'all. So um, my body has just, it was, it was on high alert. My body was screaming for help. And within two weeks that just relaxed. I don't have that, you know, high alert feeling anymore. Um, how's your, my, how's your overall energy doing? Have you made any improvement on that? Yes. Energy is improving. And also one thing I had mentioned earlier, but I haven't said here yet is just being able to accomplish a task. I've always struggled to finish the task that I start. So your mental, your mental focus is better. Yes. I'm actually like my kitchen is clean. (laughs) So that says a lot. So that is improving. How, Um, How about your weight? I have lost weight. I, I, when I saw you last time, it was 10 pounds. I think it's more than that, but I can definitely say almost a, a, almost two dress sizes as well. That's tremendous. And this I have is, not been able to do in a long time. And now, folks, we don't, we don't recommend dieting. We recommend changing eating patterns so you begin to think mm-hmm. about your food differently. You eat to live. You don't live to eat. And so mm-hmm. that means you can enjoy food. You know, you yes. just, you just eat healthy and you just don't eat junk food like most Americans do. You know, I walk around, even at church, you look at, I mean, 70% of the people, they're just, you just, it's, it's terrible how people, mm-hmm. how people have let themselves go. And of course, now we get in this problem with, uh, with, with, with the so-called pandemic that's come around and all these people want all of us who have gotten healthy and are healthy, they want us to act like. They who are overweight with diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart disease, they want us to protect them. When we've been taking care of ourselves all our lives, now all these people who haven't cared about their health expect us to make them well by by changing our habits, wearing masks, not doing you know social distancing. When we can withstand the infections, look, I've told uh, a, a short story. I've told uh, uh, people, you know, when they, when they came out with all this masking and social distancing, I said, look, I've been a doc 46 years and I've taken care of 45,000, overseen the care of 45,000 patients, Melanie, and mm-hmm. never once you think in 45 years, do you think I've ever seen anybody who was sick? Well, that's how a doctor makes a living. They see <laughs> sick patients. Okay. And so, and I did general practice and I did emergency medicine plus allergies. You see people that are coming in with bronchitis and staph infections and strep infections. I've seen them with viral and bacterial pneumonia, viral and bacterial dysentery, viral and bacterial meningitis, strep, staph infections, pseudomonas infections, tuberculosis. In 46 years of practicing medicine in the office or in the emergency room, I never once wore a mask. I never quarantined myself, never quarantined my family. Why all of a sudden do does everybody, is this so bad that everybody has to put, you know, have, have these crazy, ideas of putting on mass social distance and, and not touch anything. Don't shake a hand. Don't hug. I mean, it's just, it's all about power control and money. And I just said, that's totally wrong. You've got to be healthy. And what we encourage people to do, what you have done, get yourself healthy. Don't worry about uh, all the, we're all exposed to literally trillions of bacteria and viruses every day. It's everywhere. It's all over the countertop. It's uh, in your bathroom, it's on your table, it's in your kitchen. You've got bacteria all over your body. Most people don't realize that they have a trillion staphylococcus epidermis from the top of their head to the tip of their toe. We've got all kinds of billions and trillions of bacteria in our mouth, in our oropharynx and sinuses, in the, in the intestine. We learn to live with it. Why? Because we have healthy immune systems. That doesn't kill us. If we didn't have healthy immune systems, we'd get overrun, but it inactivates all those. That's why God gave you an immune system, but nobody ever talks about that, except we do at the OC Health and Wellness Center. You might be interested in our mission statement, which we wrote down back in in the early 1990s. Our mission is for two things, to help people have a healthy immune system and increased energy level. If you have a healthy immune system and good energy, you're going to be a healthy person. That's what we preached for our entire career since 1989. Be healthy. And don't, mm-hmm. and we've never told people don't, and we never gave flu shots to any, but we don't do any of that. Just be healthy. Your body can take care of, you can handle anything if you're healthy, but they don't want to talk about that because there's no money, there's no money in trying to get people healthy. You got to get people sick so they can put them on all the drugs like your conventional doctors were doing or give them mm-hmm. va- vaccines every six months, give you a shot every six months. So you have, you have done 
what you are our ideal guest. You have chosen, made a choice to take charge of your health, and I commend you for that. Thank Mo- you. Most people are on the wrong side of the health highway. They're going down on the wrong side, uh, and they're going to come to an overpass, and they're going to hit by get hit by an 18-wheeler. And then they're either going to get killed or they're going to be injured so badly that they're going to try to change their life. But the best thing, and you've done this before – you ended up having significant health problems, not to, not to say that you weren't experiencing significant symptoms, but until, you know, you right. really got problems with diabetes or heart disease and all that, you decided to make a change and you came in and you got on the right side of the health highway. You're going mm-hmm. the right direction and you're making progress. So the credit goes to you for following the program. You're the health athlete. We're the health coach. We make recommendations. We want you to get a gold medal. You want to get a gold medal, but you got to do the heavy lifting and you're doing it. And I am so proud of you and so grateful to you, Melanie, for, for, for giving us the opportunity to serve you. Well, and I'm grateful that y'all are there. I, I really didn't think that there was anything like this. And, you know, this is, when you get to this point, you've kind of exhausted all your avenues and, um, I just had, you know, you're right down the road, basically, and I can't, I couldn't believe I had not heard of you yet, but, you know, I trust Well, we have, to- we have quite a few folks over there in Lake Charles. That's what I hear. Yeah. We need to- We ought to give you a listen. Uh, we ought to get- Connect we, with we ought to con- We ought to connect everybody over there in some we way. We but- We, um, we could figure I'm out grateful. to do something like that. Well, listen, I want to say thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And thank you, because this is going to be an encouragement to literally- okay thousands of our listeners who are having similar problems and want to get themselves on a path of health and wellness nationally. We're here to help you. And uh, that's our goal in life is to help our guests obtain and maintain health and wellness naturally so they enjoy a better quality of life as they mature. And you're on the track. You're on the path of health and wellness. And I congratulate you. I'm excited. It's it's a great path. I'm enjoying every minute of it. (laughs) Well, thank you, Melanie. And uh, you be sure to say hello to Leo, too, for me, would you? I sure will. Thank you. Okay. Wish you every success. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Information provided on this program is neither intended nor implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice and is not intended to replace the services of a physician, nor does it constitute a doctor-patient relationship. You should not use information from this radio program to diagnose or treat a health problem or disease without consulting with a qualified health care provider. If you have or suspect you have an urgent medical problem, promptly contact a professional health care provider or call 911. Dr. Hotze's Wellness Revolution Advice advises you to always seek the advice of a physician or other qualified health provider prior to starting any new treatment or with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Any application of the recommendations from this program is at the listener's discretion.